Shroud yourself in marvelous light It's the kind of power that nobody could describe When you go down like lightning All my enemies so frightened When I pay protection They flee in several directions That was my New Year's resolution to be in the Word more often. So I wake up before the kids get up and then I read a chapter in the Bible. Um, just one because that's about as much as I can <laughs> process that early in the morning. I absolutely love getting up early in the morning. I just love it because it's sort of quiet and it just is very peaceful. I'll read the chapter and then I'll go through Enduring Word. Um, David Guzik's commentary. Yeah, that's and awesome. it's been so wonderful. I really enjoy it. Well, typically, it's in the morning when I first wake up. Before I even get out of bed, I open up my Bible and I read through a chapter or two chapters or sometimes even three. Contemplate on what is written and think about it the rest of the day. It's a, it's a good time to do it, too, because I think... For me personally, there's no distractions. Yeah, or yeah. Has your attention. Yeah. Most of the time, it's in the morning. Okay. And right now, I'm going through Bible in a year. Oh, so you're doing a reading plan? Yeah, reading plan <laughs> with Sherry. Oh, with nice. Sherry, and we're reading together on the U version app. So recently, since I started my new job, I get an hour break in the middle of the day for lunch and. That's when I've uh, chosen to get in the Word. Yeah, I go to a coffee shop, get in the Word. It really helps me, you know, get through that midday lull. Before that, it was like inconsistent times in the morning, sometimes on my drive to work. Okay. Um, trying to figure out whatever works, which I wouldn't even recommend. I would recommend <laughs> <laughs> concrete time that you're going to do it. Well, I usually do it every morning. I like read one chapter and then I like end in prayer. I just, when I don't feel like doing it, I just try to like do it. <laughs> I want to get through the whole Bible. Yeah, I just kind of push myself. I'd recommend like reading. If you're struggling, probably try to like find the most, the book that you most like think it's interesting. Sometimes the book seems a bit boring. So <laughs> <laughs> I always use my phone as my Bible. What would be funny is that maybe I would miss a few days and then I would be like, oh, I gotta get back to that. And it has a history thing. So I would push the history and it would list uh, the last time I was where I left off. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been four days. It's been five days. I didn't realize it was that long. Oh, yeah. And it's funny how you you can do that. You know, you can just, the world just keeps going and you keep like missing things. And, yeah. And missing that time. And, and, and you do feel it. You feel like maybe you're just irritated or cranky or you're going through something that's stressful. I've experienced this. I go through something stressful and it's almost like I just don't want to, I don't want to hear, you know, comfort. When you have those times where you feel like you don't want to receive like the comfort of the word, what do you think helps you overcome that? Like, do you feel like the Lord just keeps kind of tugging on your heart and pulling you to yes. it or? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's definitely that. And then when you sit down and you spend that time again, you're like, why did I ever yeah. resist this, you know? For me and, you know, I feel like a lot of other people in my position, you know, being a mom. Right, yeah. Having three little kids, <laughs> I, I think it's easy to, like, let it go and think you're fine and stuff. And probably, you know, are, I guess. But um, just the importance of not drifting and to not go overboard like you don't need a journal I don't know you just don't need much you literally just need a chapter you know of the bible and that's it you don't yeah. have to go on to more you don't you know if you're falling asleep well then you only read a paragraph yeah <laughs> you know, yeah I really think that um time after time when I've been in the word and even if it's just something little it's I mean 
crazy the coincidence of like how it applies so well to either the day or uh, you know someone else is in a different chapter and it's confirmation like wow I just read that too and it's yeah. like if I would have missed out on that you know like you think it'd be okay but I think God really wants to you know involve you in fellowship with other people and refine your heart and I think it's important to just do something if it's not something you're doing consistently get out somewhere uh maybe like a park get in nature pray for an hour and read the word for an hour and see how it goes once you realize how greatly you're affected by that yeah I feel like it'll be better motivation for you to do it throughout your week sometimes you're not going to feel like you learn anything or feel like you benefited but uh your spirit definitely did and i think you'll you and those around you will know when you're in your word and when yeah you're when my kids were little if i didn't get up and get my quiet time in before they got out of bed uh, it was a done deal the rest of the day i couldn't do it so i started out in the morning and i would usually try to get up an hour before then they were all early birds so sometimes it was hard and <laughs> yeah I'll bet. after a while i got into a sink of you know where I really needed it and there'd be mm -hmm. days that I didn't get it in and then it was harder for me because I missed it I couldn't do it or stick with it I would just put it down walk away for a long time mm, yeah so I, eventually I realized that if I missed a day it was okay I could go back the next day if I missed two days go keep going back just keep going back just keep going back it's harder now because I don't have the challenge of trying to get up before my kids so now oh, i have the time yeah and now it's challenging for me to make sure i do it mm, okay you know? so now i because you don't have the accountability of no, oh the kids are going to be up no. at seven and or something i'll just go my mind will go somewhere else as soon as i get out of bed and start thinking about the day and stuff so i find myself even now struggling sometimes in the morning to just sit down and quiet my mind and try to get that done yeah yeah if i didn't get a good night's sleep yeah, that's that fair. makes it hard. Uh, if I know I have a lot of work, a lot of work to do, and get up and you know just busyness of the day, that makes it very challenging sometimes. And sometimes, um, you know, I, I I miss it, and I really miss it when I miss it. Yeah, I really do. Sometimes I'll go back and I reread a couple of, of, of verses or you know paragraphs before. I start yeah, yeah, yeah. again and read again. So just okay. to kind of get me back in the groove. Uh, definitely like conversational, kind of random, like whenever I'm driving, just giving the Lord whatever's happening. It's definitely good, but I think setting aside times where <clears throat> all you're doing is praying is really yeah. good. It's kind of always been that, but I mean, as a kid, you kind of just pray for what you need <laughs> i try to spend more time <clears throat> thanking god and praising god and uh yeah that's the great. axe model is also a very good tool okay so for people who don't know what is the axe model so the axe model is adoration confession thanksgiving supplication okay cool and so that's kind of the model that i try to do when i pray thank god for what he's doing and then lastly lift up my needs to god and so it's kind of the reverse of how I did it as a kid. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's funny. Uh, I try to practice what Paul teaches us in Scripture to pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. And what that means to me is to have an open conversation with the Lord all day long. Because we do have access to Him. Yeah. And, you know, God's got an open door policy for His kids, and that's us. And and I look at it like, you know, if I'm in the middle of something and and I, I, I just need wisdom. I can just walk right into dad's office. It, it, it wasn't really a natural thing. It can be a natural thing. You know, I, I think I grew into it out of necessity. Just like talk to God all day. You know, I just, I, I don't know. I just, I love that, you know, of always having him close. I always like to pray and ask God to search my heart and reveal things to me that you know, I need to be aware of, mm -hmm. I need to be doing, or I is a flaw that I need to work on, or something hurt somebody's feelings that I didn't realize that I did that. It's mostly um, 
inward, but there are a lot more instances now with kids, with my kids, that I pray outward. You yeah. Know, like if I see them starting to get upset or if I get frustrated and I feel like, you know, I owe them an apology or something, mm. I, you know, I take a second and I pray like, Lord, you know, help me. And I feel like by me being able to pray with my kids, whether it's me saying sorry or teaching them, you know, like to go to God first, that it's been a lot more involved with them, especially now that they're a little bit older, they can comprehend that. I pray sometimes when I feel I'm bowed down, I pray. I have like little sections in my prayer. It's like first it's like about the day and then it's about like maybe stuff that's happening like outside outside of my daily life. My my mom's friend has cancer so I pray for her that she like heal up. Yeah, stuff. that's so sweet. So, what about personal and, like, natural things? It's more inward. Mm -hmm. it's, it's me quietly speaking to the Lord. It's been more like that over the years. Because okay. when my kids were little, I would read my quiet time I, uh, through the Bible or the devotions that I was reading. And I would journal. And then I would write my prayers out. Sometimes you just write it out and read it and you go, why am I worrying? 